Hello everyone, Ken here, back with another video where I review your projects, resumes, portfolios, and now sometimes LinkedIn profiles. Special thanks today to Shile. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm absolutely butchering these names lately, but he submitted his resume and his GitHub for review. His work is fairly unique because it's very focused on the finance sector. So he's looking to work as an analyst, a data scientist in that realm. So I think he does very well on some things and there are a couple tweaks that he could make. I think that again, this is a really good use case to talk about how you can niche down and target some very specific roles and that, how that can potentially help you. I think Shile actually landed an internship within this domain um, according to his GitHub profile. So this could be in a sense a success story and you can follow along with some of the things that he does well. If you'd like your projects, portfolios, resumes, or LinkedIn profile reviewed, please comment below to let me know and also shoot me an email at kenji.ds at gmail.com. All that information will be pinned in the first comment of the, uh, on the video. So without further ado, let's hop in to the resume review here. So this is a very good, just traditional resume. He has, um, at the top, I blurred out his email and his phone number. It's perfectly fine. I think this is the type of resume most companies are used to seeing. And I think that that's perfectly fine. One thing that I like that he does is that he makes it clear that he's a US citizen. I think sometimes there can be some ambiguity about that and companies up front generally want to know that. Uh, if there's any chance that, they, that, that there might be some uncertainty about that, you might as well include it as well. His skills, again, I love that they're up top. He has a lot of relevant Python, a lot of relevant skills for this field. Something that I think might help him out a little bit more would be to have a couple of packages or a couple of different tools that are more related to finance. So in finance, you're still using Excel quite a bit. I would expect to see that in a resume related to finance. If there's any Python packages that are directly relatable, perhaps even the Yahoo Finance API, just having familiarity with those things and making it clear that you have skills within that domain could be really valuable. That also goes for his education. I love seeing the relevant coursework here, but if he has taken any finance courses, I think it would be really important to put those in here because it shows that you have a bit more depth. If he's taken any certificates or watched any or done any coursework outside of school related to finance, I would also put that in here. I think that that could be really relevant. He goes on to show that he does have a lot of experience in finance through his extracurricular activities. And this is done really well for someone who doesn't have as much true work experience or internship experience. I love how in depth he goes into his extracurricular activities. And a lot of people don't realize how valuable these extracurriculars can be. So he's on the first robotics team. He does a great job talking about these things. He's part of the algorithmic trading club. It looks like he really wants to go into algorithmic trading in general. So this is the perfect club for him to join and get involved in. If you're in college, if you're in school, I cannot stress enough how important it is for you to join clubs or even start clubs if there aren't ones that, uh, you, that meet your specific interests. In grad school, I started a data science and sports analytics club. And a lot of people, when I was interviewing, actually asked me about that. So they're interested in that for two reasons. The first is, okay, he's clearly interested in domain. What did he learn? Who did he bring in? What were the speakers like? What was that experience like? The second thing is that they really like to see leadership experience, that you can work well with others. And that's a clear point of departure for a lot of people. Uh, kind of, I guess, third thing also is that it shows that you can get along and potentially work on projects with other people. So that's another kind of icing on the cake for that type of experience. Again, he's in a lot of these different programs, and I think that that's really good. It shows a lot of the things that you would look for in someone's work experience. And if you're early in your college career, or if you just haven't had those opportunities yet, this is a great way to supplement some of that. All of his projects are also very clearly related to 
the positions he's applying for. So there's a current a currency swap arbitrage opportunity. Um, I didn't see this in his repo. I I think it's interesting that he says code available upon request. You know, that's something that he could probably write a blog post about or he wouldn't have to share that code if it's still being in use. Uh, the, the time series forecasting with machine learning and then a trade stat logger in his GitHub. So I think his resume is really good. I would like to see, um, you know, I, I wouldn't make too many changes other than integrating his schoolwork or infusing his schoolwork up top with some financially related things. Uh, if he wanted to, you know, when he does have this, this internship that he has now on his resume, I would let, I'd be interested to see how he talks about that, where he fits it in. You know, does he make a new section? What would that look like? Um, I, I, I think he could even switch out extracurricular activities and call it leadership experience or uh, some other sort of experience. The kind of branding might work fairly well there. Obviously, he was able to land an internship. So I think that, again, this resume worked reasonably well. And with a few tweaks, that could really push him forward in the future of getting a full-time job, not just internships. So let's switch over to his GitHub profile. So he has a nice professional high quality photo. This is looks like a professional photo. One thing, again, if you're in school that I really recommend, you might be able to get free professional photos taken. I know that a lot of entrepreneurship departments, a lot of business school departments, sometimes even a lot of CS departments offer this service. 100% capitalize on it if they offer it. Um, also ask if they offer it or if they'd be willing to put together an offering for that at your school or your, your um, you know, like the guidance counselor for, for careers, whatever that might be. That's a really great opportunity. Professional photos can go a, 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 a long, long way. Uh, he says where he's working. He says, you know, where this company's located, etc. cetera. Um, and then he has all of his repos. So I think that he could probably go with a bit more... Uh, with a bit clearer naming conventions for these. So tutorials, I mean, he says what they are. I think that's totally fine. Uh, one thing I've been seeing a lot is people pin repos that are most relevant. So he might want to consider doing that. Or as I've talked about in like the last three or four videos, having a landing page that uh, my friend uh, Import Data has talked about and, and has a tutorial on. So I'll link that above and below. I think that that's really good. And I keep saying I'm going to do it for mine, but I haven't gotten to it yet. So guys, hold me accountable. You can yell at me in the comment section if you need to. So the first thing that I liked was this get all tickers code. So this is really well documented. This is something that he expects other people to be using. And I really like the logic of why he built this. So he couldn't find any libraries to retrieve all the tickers for all the different stocks. So he went out and solved this problem himself with some light code. Those are the exact types of projects that I would like to see as a manager, as someone who's hiring or just a person in general, like this is useful to me. I'm actually thinking of doing some, some machine learning type projects with some stock data and I might actually use his exact package. Of course I will cite it, I'll fork it, I'll do whatever, uh, but making your work valuable to others when you see a problem solving it with your with your own um, skills is i mean this project might very well be what landed him his first internship um, so again a really really good documentation here shows how to go about doing that you can choose which exchange it's coming from um, and again just all around this isn't necessarily a data science project but part of data science is the data collection and this does that really well. I expect that he probably used this in one of his more data science related projects in general. He also has a um, one of the competitions that he participated in. Again, he's worked really hard on the structure of the readme. This is a high quality readme. And I really like why he chose, why he noted the reasons that he chose Java over Python. Something I recommend in all of your code and all of your readmes is when you, whenever you make a key decision, you should explain why you do it or why you did it. And again, that's the perfect use case for Java versus Python here. In my project from scratch series uh, tutorial, 
or I guess video or project walkthrough, whatever you want to call it. I use Jupyter Notebooks for some of the analysis and Spider for, for some of the other uh, different parts of the analysis. And I make a very clear use case why. So for the exploratory data analysis, you want to be able to interact with it in real time. It makes more sense to use a Jupyter Notebook. For the other stuff, you're implementing it, you'd want to run it as a script potentially. So it makes more sense to do it as a raw Python file. So whenever you're making those decisions, it's very important to explain why and to kind of tell a story about what's happening here. Another uh, good one is the trade stat logger that he does here. I think that, again, these are really strong. This is very, very well documented. And one thing I like to see with these are the uh, examples. This is something that's very important. He has contact information. This is pretty... Uh, as textbook as you can be about um, you know about what a project should probably look like again not purely a data science project this is more of a programming project uh, but this is very well done I again might actually use this for my project that I'm planning hopefully by the end of the year so let's get into some of his actual machine learning projects which I think probably are more relevant for this so obviously he, he really slimmed down on the readme here. This is something where I think he could really improve his chances if he's applying for a pure data science role. So if he's doing machine learning engineering, the other projects are probably fine, but we still want to see better documentation in this, very similar to how we set up the other readmes. So let's see what this looks like. Actually, I think I had it loaded here. Well, so he goes through, he does use comments fairly well. Um, and he talks through the steps. So this is something I would probably like to see in the readme as well. It's fine if he just copies it in both places. Um, so he gets a list of tickers and he uses the um, sklearn, I guess that's, uh, I guess that's their version of a neural net in sklearn. That's something I've never used before. I'm actually learning something new with you guys. I might experiment, experiment with this a little bit, maybe in my next upcoming uh, Kaggle video that'll come out a little bit later. This looks like the implementation slightly easier than Keras or some of the other uh, architectures out there. So again, might explore with this. This looks pretty cool. Uh, generally, this project is, is pretty good. It's a little bit short, but again, it's right related to the use case that he's trying to understand. So. Again, if, if he can go into an interview with someone related to finance or, uh, or a quantitative trading, whatever that might be, and show them that he's built tools to be able to do this, tools that they might already be able to use, and he can run analysis using them, I think that that's a really, really strong thing. It's a really like, uh, powerful, hey, I, I can show you the work I've already done to further the work that you guys are doing at your company. So. I highly recommend, I would almost say for every new position you apply for, if you're really crazy about it, or you can find four or five companies in the same sector, do a project related to that sector. You can use it and talk about it in each of these different interviews and it can really help you along. Um, the next one that I saw was this value investing. Again, even more sparse on the, um, on the readme here. So maybe talk about what value investing is. I believe that's from Warren Buffett, where we're talking about um, you know investing for the long term, and he's probably trying to create that here. So let's look at what this looks like. Again, he does a, a good job here about explaining what it is, what the strategies are. So when it looks cheap uh, and selling it once it seems expensive, seems pretty intuitive. I'm sure Warren Buffett would be pleased. Um, maybe a little bit more sparse with the commenting here. But overall, both of these projects have looked very good. They're pretty straight and to the point. I'd potentially like to see a bit more exploratory analysis. I think using some graphs that are familiar to people in finance, you know, you see a lot of those uh, kind of like graduated bar charts. That probably looks pretty cool. And that, you know, that's used a lot in technical trading. So mixing some of the things that people are expecting to see in could take this even further. So I really liked Sheila's um, profile and his resume. They obviously worked in lending him an internship. 
Again, I think you can take this a step further, especially when he's focusing on his machine learning projects, documenting them just a little bit better. Uh, and also, you know, making sure that his educational background is, is showcasing as much of the finance related stuff as possible. So I hope that this is useful to anyone who is either looking to get a job in quantitative finance, is looking to get a job as an analyst in data science in, in college. I think that there's a lot of things that, that can be used as best practices in his work here, uh, especially related to creating projects, building the tools um, that you believe can help you do the analysis you want to do. So thank you so much for watching and good luck on your data science journey.